Yeah, I, I, I've shamelessly changed the slide after yesterday. I didn't realise I was in charge of a city of uh, history in progress, but actually I think that's a great strap line. And I think those two, to those two pictures try and sum up really what, what I think Leicester's about in a funny way. Uh, we, we've been here for 2,000 years. It was probably a very different place when uh, King Richard was here. And again, the, you can see the, the, the growth of the city. Uh, and actually, uh, I think the, a lot of the perspective of my talk is about the challenges of growth as opposed to the, uh, the city centre, and I think Sir Peter hopes he's going to pick up on uh, some, of the, some of the city centre issues in particular when he arrives later on. So I'm going to say a few words about planning context in general, which is a bit depressing. Um, a few words about Leicester in context, which is much less depressing, um, and some talk, go through uh, some of our track record of recent delivery. Um, and I think picking up on a couple of strands uh, that, that, that uh, actually Mike picked up on, there's a couple of policy threads that actually I feel very strongly are part of like, this place's DNA, uh, the, the environment and, and the built heritage. So I'm going to pick up on that and finish off with a bit about the challenges and opportunities for, for the city. Um, planning's changed a lot in the last few years. And again, I might mention things like the structure plan and uh, there, was a, there was an awful lot of governance around. Uh, uh, and actually some of that governance was quite irritating and frustrating when you wanted to get on with planning and doing things, but actually all that's gone. <laughs> um, and actually it's a, it's a very different, planning is a very different world uh, nowadays from maybe seven or eight or nine years ago. Um, things like the national planning policy framework is very pro-development, very prescriptive and actually quite an open-ended uh, document. Um, the local enterprise partnerships are now uh, very powerful in terms of their economic strength and, uh, and role, but the, their accountability could be questioned to a degree. So there's no real regional level of government in, 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 the, in the country, um, but there is this duty to cooperate, uh, which means we have to work in partnership with our local authorities surrounding us, but it's not a duty to agree, which is, uh, <laughs> lend, it lends itself. And then obviously, really, local neighbourhoods are, are interested now with developing formal plans for themselves. Um, and actually, that is potentially a very good thing, but in my experience, a lot of the neighbourhood plans that are emerging tend to be a little bit uh, less pro-development than maybe the government expects them to be. Um, and I think <coughs> Mike mentioned before the point about housing. Uh, the, the, the current government's policy on housing, and this is not meant to be a political point, the, the, there, is, there is no policy on housing, basically, other than the market should be providing housing. And, and the, the, net, the role of councils and planners and housing officers in social housing planning is, is actually almost non-existent. Uh, we now no longer plan for schools. Uh, the government has reduced national environmental standards. It's, to be fair, it's put some of them into the building regulations, but a lot of the environmental standards that we were aiming for are, are, are now gone. There's very few government grants around. I'm only in favour of grants, that being one, but the, 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 a lot of the government funding is really about repayable loans. Um, and again, we've suffered significant huge cuts in public funding, public funding and investment. And then there's Brexit. So, <clears throat> it gets worse. That's, that's a TCPA book that came out this week. <clears throat> and actually, I think it was a, the red bit is a, is a quote, I think somebody mentioned this yesterday, actually, that really... The private market is now at the, the, the centre of development delivery. Um, and, uh, and actually, if the planning authorities don't respond to the market, don't provide a positive framework, we get penalised for local, local slow plan making, we lose new homes bonus. Uh, the government have got the ability to actually do a plan to us, which is quite an, quite an interesting prospect, actually appealing in some respects, if we didn't have to pay for the privilege. Um, <clears throat> and then there's things like special measures for development control performance, and that means that applicants, if, you're, if we're in a special measures on performing authority, applicants can go directly to the government for a decision. And then there's been massive expansion of permitted development rights, which means that things don't need permission any longer. <laughs> I'll come back to things like office to residential conversions, but prior approvals. So this is, a, a, this is something that now doesn't need planning permission. And you may be able, so that, that extension there, <laughs> that's the house. The now, if, if that person gets on with his neighbours, it doesn't need permission. Because we consult with the neighbours, that comes in, if the neighbours don't object to it, then it doesn't need consent. If the neighbours do object to it, then it's brought within the, the planning system and we're allowed to then deal with it and say that is not an, an appropriate extension. So we're in a, uh, we're in a different world. <coughs> so there's not a lot to be positive about, <coughs> but actually there is. And I, I've been here for two years, and there have been great things happening in Leicester for two years. Uh, I can't claim credit for hardly any of them, and the Mayor will talk a lot more about 
the really the, 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 the great events that have happened recently. We, this place is a very different place, feels very different from, what it, from, from when I started in just the last two years, but I know there's been an awful lot of effort in investment <clears throat> and actually uh, in terms of trying to position the city in a way that's very outward looking, very confident. Um, and uh, big investment programs to actually uh, change the perception, maybe the, the unwelcome perception of, of, of what the city's about. I'm going to talk about housing delivery and, and how we're, we're pushing forward on that, hopefully in terms of quality. Um, and it's really showing. Uh, just over the road in that great brutalist building on New Walk, which divides opinion, uh, IBM are setting up a new office, uh, great uh, new investment into the city. Hastings Irex have just, have just moved to Leicester. IBM say the reason they came here is a growing young city, it's got great universities and it's really well located in, in, in the country. Uh, so people are beginning to realise Leicester is a great place to invest. We've got an awful lot of activity on, in the world side, which I'm going to come on to in a bit more detail later on. Um, and actually, strategically, we are, we're, 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 doing, we're doing okay. Um, so we are cooperating well with the adjoining authorities. Um, there's, a, there's an awful lot of effort in that. The, 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 we, we need to try and plan for growth in an evidence-based way, which means we need to com, com, uh, commission evidence together with the adjoining boroughs, look at how the infrastructure and how the, the relationship between the city and the, and the adjacent district grows. Things like education have mass, and transport have massive cross-boundary influences. We have got haven't got maybe the control we would like, but we're actually trying to establish a plan with significant studies in terms of transport, new rail strategy. And we're actually just about to start consulting on a new strategic growth plan, which will set effectively the, re, the, the sub-regional ambition to 2050 in terms of housing and employment growth. So in this absence of uh, regional governance, we're, we're making progress. And actually, um, those sites are, have already got effects. We've got planning commission. Um, you've got a big urban extension to the northeast of Leicester and Charmwood. Uh, Ashton Green, I'll talk a bit more about, and a big urban extension on uh, the other side of the city in, in Blaby. Now, those things are very difficult to deliver. They were actually positioned through the regional spatial strategy and the structure plans, and actually probably taken 10, 15 years to come to fruition. They are ready to go. Um, whether they go and how quickly they go, I think is a real moot point because the infrastructure required to support those really big substantial urban extensions, I'm not so sure the values of the land values or the, uh, the market can actually deliver that infrastructure. Um, so uh, watch this space on the outside of the city. In terms of the city itself, and I, thought, I was fascinated by Mike's comment that we were building a thousand council homes a year back in the 90, 80s, is that? 70s. 70s, sorry. Um, so that this, is, this is what we're doing at the moment. So our housing target, which the government requires us to meet, if we don't meet that, we're in big trouble. Almost 1,300 homes a year, additional homes. So if you knock some down, then they get taken off, they get netted off. We've done pretty well over the last 10 years. Leicester's number, if you can see it, we've actually delivered it almost 11,000 of the 13,000 target, which actually is pretty good going. Um, quite a substantial proportion of that is student accommodation. But actually, quite a substantial proportion of the, the development that's on site at the moment, and there's about 1,100 um, uh, active sites, uh, 1,100 uh, sort of dwellings actually on, on site at the moment, almost 1,500 student schemes on site. There's a lot of development activity going on in the city, which is a very good thing. <clears throat> and actually, the nature of some of the sites coming forward, um, this is a, an example that people in the room will probably be familiar with. Um, Long-standing regeneration ambition. This was the former BUSM site. Again, a, a part of Leicester's past, manufacturing past. But actually, uh, I think the nature of how the planning of areas like this, and a lot of the sites are actually in around the water side. It's interesting the comment that Mike made about the, really the, the, the river and the canal and the role they play in the city. Um, so this is a great scheme, I think. It actually is permeable, it's got good home space in it, and it links through to um, the uh, Frog Island at the top there, and, and again, uh, we're, we're seeing a bit of progress, progress there. I think Freeman's Common, the Barrett scheme, is actually a really good example of residential development. Um, and again, of its time, I think some of the regeneration uh, comments made earlier on about uh, City Challenge, the investment framework to actually deliver regeneration in, in, cha in challenging brownfield sites is actually, uh, uh, it needs public sector intervention uh, I, and I don't think this wouldn't have happened without that public sector intervention. <coughs> Ashton Green is actually a very substantial opportunity but it's been an opportunity for about 20 years. <coughs> now, 
The city owns the site. It was allocated in the local plan, potentially up to 3,000 new, new houses, uh, uh, significant substantial employment uh, and green space allocations, uh, 15 to 20 year delivery timescale. I'm pleased to say that actually we are making progress. The, 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 a lot of the employment, some, half the employment has been delivered and, is, and there's demand for more. Um, we put a lot of infrastructure in, in and around the site. Uh, there's outline planning consent and we've actually now just got our first uh, uh, planning application reserve matters from Morris Homes is actually sitting in the office, although I think we've lost the check, so, but hey, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be on with that shortly. And there's substantial developer interest for the, for the, next, for the next parcel. So again, really important to make sure that the city can grow sustainably. Um, and we're doing that in, in other areas across the city. There's four, there's, as well as Ashton Green, uh, we've got a current application of Blackbird Road, uh, St Mary's Allotments, Franklin Fields, they're, they're all in the pipeline. And, and Fraser and other colleagues will remember, those, those are local plan allocations that took a long time to become established and agreed through the planning process. I'm optimistic that those, they will be coming through to planning applications to help support the demand to meet those targets uh, in, the, in the coming months. Which, uh, is, and because the council owns those sites, the development briefs that have been issued with them mean that the uh, public owned space and the contributions for education, the contribution of highways are all covered as part of the financial, uh, the financial package. We could have just sold them off to the market with no constraints, but actually uh, the council is very keen to make sure that the development actually deals with its impacts and actually contributes to the employment, contributes to the, to the, the, the wider infrastructure requirements in a, in a way that is actually hopefully setting a good example. But it's not all public sector led. That's now a current application on Frog Island, uh, next to the BUSM scheme, uh, and again, that's uh, under current consideration. So the economic conditions um, in the city are good. Um, as I say, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about the, uh, the city centre, because um, Sir Peter's going to do that, but in terms of, uh, I think, most of the, the conversation we had yesterday about Smigielski, it was very much about trying to make sure the place is right for people and how we, how we actually provide conditions for economic growth. Um, and actually, I think Leicester has invested really successfully in this over the last few years, and there's a real, there's a real buzz about the place. I bring people, I bring, I bring developers down from Liverpool who are amazed about what they're seeing in this city, which is, a, uh, which is really, really, really positive. Um, and again, there's a whole range of investments that have been largely led by the City Council, but not just not solely by the City Council. And it, it's, it's, it's not just about the places, it's actually it's about the, the, about the use of those places and the fact that the city centre is now inhabited and, and used and enjoyed and visited in a very different way from, uh, from what it used to be. And there's, more, and there's more to come, as you'll hear later on this afternoon. Um, so we've heard about Newark, and I, I, I actually quite like Newark Centre, I must admit. I, didn't, I never had to work in it, thankfully. But I think it's a really strong statement of its age, and I was fascinated to hear Lutz's uh, uh, conversations uh, yesterday. Um, and, I, and again, I, I, you can debate the quality of its replacement, but again, the, this scheme is now on site. Um, and the really good news about this scheme is that the, the occupiers of the offices, a company called Mattioli Woods, are currently based out at Grove Farm, an office campus outside the city boundary. And they're moving back into the city centre. And I think that's a really positive, very positive thing because the city centre has got to thrive. It's got to have a good balance of office, uh, residential and leisure uses. And, and this is, I think it will be a good example of a really sensitive uh, uh, mixed use scheme that actually will respect New Walk. And again, we've, we've got the emerging details of the treatment of the New Walk across and adjacent to the site. And that's going to be significantly improved. <coughs> and I think the, the other really big thing is the water side. Um, I think that with uh, Prospect Leicestershire, there's been a lot of a lot of failed attempts to try and really regenerate the water side. Um, the the we've got supplementary planning documents in place to support effectively compulsory purchase orders to acquire the land to deliver in what is a fascinating uh, opportunity. Right, uh, really on on the edge of the city centre, in in, in in adjacent to. Uh, very close to High Cross, uh, challenges about connectivity across the Ring Road, challenges about how we actually respect the, the heritage of and the important heritage of assets of uh, church -like churches and the, 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 the context. But it's, um, we, we are about to make the next step in terms of uh, compulsory purchase. We've got, or about to get, a developer partner on board to effectively work with the council to uh, get to delivery of the, of the scheme. Um, 
there's a there's an outline planning permission in place, and how that how that how the scheme actually bridges bridges that that well important um, important part of the city between the commercial core, but actually some sensitive residential areas actually is is really important to get that right. So it is about the green infrastructure, the landscaping, and making sure that the pedestrian cycle connectivity actually ties the area in, and that we avoid some of the some of the uh, maybe mistakes of earlier, maybe more ambitious regeneration schemes, which actually were very big, uh, very ambitious, um, have raised development values in the area to an extent that is actually frustrating delivery. Um, so again, I'm very optimistic that we're going to be moving forward in a, in a positive way there. And I'm trying not to duplicate Sir Peter's slide, but I couldn't resist um, drawing attention to Friars Mill, which I think is one of the, the really, uh, it's a fantastic story. Uh, one of the most important listed buildings in the city um, uh, was in a very, very parlous state. Uh, the city mayor decided to buy it um, and to put some money into developing a plan uh, for, the, for, for Fries Mill, which is about mixed use, office, starter units, employment, uh, employment space, which is in desperate need in the city. Uh, and actually, if you go down there today, that's what it looks like. Um, fantastic scheme, which actually really leads in terms of the, the sort of quality, the investment quality, and uh, that I think is hopefully setting the tone and setting a standard that we will be able to follow through in the, in the schemes, to, schemes to come. And then in terms of the waterside wider connectivity, that's Abbey Park. Um, I'm told that visitors to, to Leicester sometimes don't know that Abbey Park's there. Abbey Park's a real treasure. The Mayor's committed to uh, invest in a bridge to link the, the park to the city centre. I think the, he's not happy with the width of that one, so I think, I, I think the slide's out of date. I'm looking at Adam, he's nodding. I think it's going to be a wider bridge than that. And again, really good cycle connectivity. So again, making sure it's not just about the city centre, it's how the city then is connected into uh, the residential areas and the really important assets on the fringes of the city. Um, the highway, the highway uh, network in Leicester is, is pretty constrained. We haven't got many opportunities to really significantly enhance uh, capacity. Our public transport networks are maybe not as easily expanded as might, we might wish, uh, but we do have some significant plans already in, on, this, on site at the moment and in place to, again, make sure that the, the infrastructure of the area can be uh, uh, expanded to, uh, to accommodate the, the, the substantial uh, increase in activity in the area. And then a little bit, a little bit further on, uh, we've got the space park, uh, the university. We've got some very interesting ideas. What we, what we might want to do in that area in partnership. Uh, the, 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 the picture at the top there is the, the dock, dock uh, economic uh, uh, work units are fully occupied. There's, there's, there's big demand for further space in that area. So that's another city council proposal to expand and increase the activity in that part of the, the city. But in terms of the, the sort of the those two policy strands, environmental policy, um, we, it, sustainable urban drainage um, is actually really important in a city like Leicester. We're, we're, we're on the Environment Agency's uh, most, risk, most risky areas. Uh, we work very well with the Environment Agency, but it's not just about the big, the big schemes. It's actually about making sure that developments as far as can can deal with the impacts of local, uh, local flooding, water drainage impacts on site. So they're not contributing to the the pressures on the wider drainage network. So that, that's Hamilton in the top there, and again, that's the uh, new Asda supermarket. Uh, we're spending an awful lot of time trying to negotiate and design in suds in a way that's sensitive, that may hopefully uh, begin to begin to actually be part of the open space developments. This is a current application up at Blackbird Road at the moment. Uh, Barrett's have, have submitted this. But also, we're, we're trying to make sure that the, 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 the suds features Will, will require less uh, hard drainage and that can be integrated through things like these parking areas along the, with parking laybys, which again minimise the need for on-plot parking. So our, our um, uh, landscape designers, planners, urban designers, engineers, we're all working hard to try and make sure that actually the, the, the developments that we are delivering are really fit for the future. It's not easy because we've got to come up with new maintenance regimes and, and agreements to make sure that the sites can be looked after. And it means that on in places like Ashton Green, we need to really, we don't start with the roads anymore. Um, we actually start with the levels and start with the landscape and actually look at how, if you're going to be developing 3,000 houses on that site, how are we going to have a st strategic drainage plan that can be uh, put in place that will actually be sustainable and, and successful. And that's another example, um, EMH's scheme, which is a passive house scheme. I think one of the, one of the biggest passive house 
residential schemes in the country. Um, uh, this will be fantastic. Again, the suds throughout the throughout the scheme really contributing a decent amount of home space. Um, and that site was effectively sold, I think, for a pound to the consortium to develop it by the City Council. And we wanted to see a really good quality of development that is actually really res responds to that environmental legacy that Mike alluded to earlier on. And there's also things like the contributions of other developers, people like the university. Um, uh, we got big investment in sort of green and blue infrastructure programs. Councillor Clark, who's joined us, is actually chasing us hard on building on the new Europa Nostra award that Mike alluded to earlier on. So I think Adam wants one of his own, which uh, we're really keen to try and deliver with him. And things like the, the, the scheme that I think somebody asked a question about earlier on. So this is um, the uh, flood risk management scheme. Flood risk management schemes used to be quite engineered. Um, this, isn't, this is effectively, it's an ecology scheme. It's, uh, it's there's pedestrian cycle route improvements, there's local environmental urban space enhancements, and there's actually flood capacity built into it. And I think this is an award, this is award winning stuff that actually is is really really uh, it's it's not that difficult to do, but it's actually it's difficult to get the people who understand how these things fit together and work together. And we're lucky that we've got a lot of very good people in Leicester who understand that. Who knows what that is? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So the engineering building, I mean, we've got, we've got amazing, amazing heritage assets in the city. That's the, that's the new uh, window treatment for the, that's actually on site at the university at the moment. I don't know how much, is Mike Quealy still here? Yes. How much is the university putting into the, to that scheme? It's 19 and a half million. 19 and a half million pounds. So mm -hmm. it's not just about the city understanding what assets it's got. Uh, that's one of the best buildings in the, well, uh, it's one of the best buildings. Um, so... <laughs> Look, looking forward to seeing how that evolves. And the, 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 heritage, the heritage that we got is really, really globally significant. Uh, I, I was talking a bit earlier on about the Parliament of the Clubs, which uh, some of you may or may not know what that was. Parliament was held in that room, as I understand it, in the Castle Hall. Um, and this is the other university have actually now, in partnership with the Council, uh, taken over the building on a long lease and going to be using it in a way that actually will still maintain public asset access to it, but actually will be a building that's used, enjoyed uh, in, a, in a way that is, so it's really gonna un, 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 uncover uh, some great aspects of our, of our history and our heritage. And actually what Leicester's very good at is actually telling our stories. I mentioned the, the quality of Leicester book, but actually I think these panels are fantastic actually. They're done jointly by a heritage team and our uh, uh, museum service, they tell the story of the, of the, and they tell it in a way that's actually very accessible. I've only been here for a couple of years and I don't know these stories. And I think the, so again, as, you, as, as tourists come and walk around Leicester, they can see and they can understand some of the, what is the, the history of these, uh, these amazing assets that we got. I'm going to say a little bit about the Townscape Heritage Initiative because I think this is a real little treasure for the city. Uh, a couple of years ago, we put the bid in. Uh, we've got a relatively small amount of money from uh, Heritage Lottery Fund for grants uh, to enhance the historic uh, nature of the of the area. So it's the it's a relatively small area. It's one of the most it's one of the best areas of the city. Um, the old town, the old Georgian town. A lot of the solicitors have moved out to beyond the motorway. Uh, probably regret it. Um, and actually, the we didn't when we decided to put this as our THI scheme, we didn't know. That, that there was a king in it, um, so that was a bit of serendipity. Um, but actually, it's got amazing, amazing buildings, and again, we're seeing some fantastic results already. Um, this is the, the 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 new Delilahs. Anybody been there? I'd absolutely highly recommend it. It's it's the former bank on the corner of uh, St Martin's and Lowesby Lane. <clears throat> There's a bit of a conservation debate about whether we should let them lower the windows, but I'd absolutely. Uh, of course we should. Um, and the, and the, the nature of how that, that building's been transformed, the lantern, which you can see there, was you know, just totally painted over. So there was a £200,000 grant that the City Council put into that scheme by the THI. Um, I think that was £200,000 very well spent because Delilah's is a really good attraction in Nottingham and now we've got one as well and I think ours is better. Um, the, this, the bank on the, just in the, the rear of the picture there, that's going to be opening as a steakhouse uh, in the next six months or so, hopefully. Uh, we're talking to them about uh, them taking up part of the Mayor's Architectural Feature Lighting Scheme, which is a scheme to try and highlight these really fantastic buildings that Leicester's got, and they're uh, responding very positively, positively to that. Residential and city centre, again, that's former solicitor's offices. Uh, THI money's gone into that on New Street. And again, the, the, I, so we've only been given grants for about the last six months or so. We've got three or four really good schemes and lots more to come. 
and actually it's also about the public realm. The city mayor has decided he thinks we ought to be investing in the public realm in this area throughout most of the area. Uh, and again, there's a question as to how is that a really good use of public funds when things are, when money's so challenged and so so tight. But actually, I mean, you know, the, again, I think the pictures speak for themselves. This part of Leicester is a part of Leicester that people are really enjoying, and, and again, I think it's going to see more visitors, more visitors, not less. Um, one of the other things that I guess I'm trying to do, we're trying to do, is really raise the standard of design in the city. Um, there's, there's a, I think this is common to any, every city has got a scheme like that. That's, uh, there are, it's difficult to maybe challenge design in a constructive way unless you've got good architects who are willing to respond and, and actually take care in the details. This is a good scheme, I think. It's, the reason it's a good scheme is things like the, it's a really nice brick, the windows are recessed, the window frames are actually quite elegant, and the, the architect took a lot of, lot, a lot of um, time to make sure those details were, 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 were actually uh, established in a really uh, careful and sensitive way. Um, that's the plan we got in last year for Granby Street next to the old Thomas Cook building. Is that good enough for Granby Street? I don't think it was. We know we managed to negotiate a better scheme. Again, you could criticise it, but I think there's, uh, there's a number of, number of schemes which actually never see the light of day. <laughs> is that a front elevation or a rear elevation? Where's the entrance? <coughs> that is the front elevation of a scheme. Came into us not long ago. Um, even worse, um, there was a, there's a nice uh, Victorian listed, uh, locally listed warehouse in this part of the park. So we weren't very happy with that. Uh, we managed to negotiate a better scheme. I think words got round in the architectural community that we like that other one I showed you because the, again, the architectural treatment here is Looks a bit familiar, doesn't it, really? But, um, but actually, so that's now on site, and again, it's probably a bit higher than maybe the new, new, new build out is a bit higher than we maybe we would wish, but actually, I don't think you can have a cake and eat it. Uh, we've enhanced the viability, kept the building, and I think actually the developer is, I think he's pleased in, in terms of where we, where we ended up on that one. But I am noticing that actually a lot of the architects, again, have uh, picked up on when we, if, if, if they know we like a design, then they'll, they'll tend to submit similar designs. So I'm, I'm challenging architects to be a bit more imaginative, but anyway. <coughs> so we've got some future challenges. Um, and again, these are, this is a, a, a slide, there's a few acronyms on there, but it's basically the, the, the percentage that the, this percentage shows the share of housing growth that effectively the city had from the old structure plan, the old regional spatial strategy, and the uh, the latest housing market assessment. We've we've we've, deli we've delivered an awful lot of growth for the for the whole of the the, the area. We're, we're commissioning new evidence at the moment. There's more going to be more growth pressures. That's going to put pressure on things like home space and infrastructure. How we deal with that with education and transport. We have a desperate need for employment sites in the city. Um, existing businesses can't find the land to expand. They're asking us for new allocations, new sites to to deliver. Um, and actually, we've got some fantastic uh, industrial heritage in the city that are a really difficult challenge for us. They're, 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 they're great. We, we, they're difficult to actually make render fit for purpose from an employment point of view. A, some residential potential, well, that's something which, again, we're trying to really get our heads around how we maintain and, and sustain the, the sort of supply of employment space we need. You are actually in the heart of uh, the professional office area as allocated in the local plan. Um, it doesn't feel like an office area totally, it's, a, it's an area of change, but actually the commercial, the commercial positioning of Leicester in relation to London only an hour around the train, I think that the office provision that we're going to be looking at in the new local plan is actually something that we need to really try and get right. And actually this is where the government aren't making things easy for us, because that office to residential now long, no longer needs permission if you don't change the outside of the building. So over the last couple of years we've lost about 30,000 square metres of office space. Uh, there's a, we've gained about a thousand uh, residential units, uh, which you could or could or maybe shouldn't describe as rabbit hutches. But the 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 the, the lack of control over our commercial core is actually something that I think Smigielski would have been very concerned about. We haven't got the control that people think that we have, um, and I think the same applies to things like retail and how the city the city saw off, saw off Centre Twenty One. Um, Things like the internet and special forms of trading and how we work with people like Hammerson who've invested in amazing, in, in amazing quality in the city. Uh, this is where I think the, the nature of that, the, the, the tourism and leisure offer, it's really important that we provide uh, conditions for those, those areas and those uses to actually grow and grow in a way that we're not constraining those opportunities. 
And I think one of the most interesting bits of the six times, we talked about the waterside, the old town, uh, the mayor's got his plans for the market and the, 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 the obvious parts of the city centre. The bit that I'm really, I've really been struggling with is this northern bit of the city centre. This is, and we've got quite a bit of development interest actually, um, coming forward with significant development proposals in this part of the city, but it, the values are very low, the environmental quality is quite deg degraded, the nature of the ownerships are very fractured. Um, but if we get it right, I think this could be a really, really big opportunity. And, and I'm really pleased that the urban design team at the council probably, probably could have got a job in Smiggy Elsie's design and delivery unit. Um, actually, are beginning to do the analysis. Um, this is a, just a bit of early work to look at really about what are the, how do we try and work with the permeability of the area, look at the key problems of connectivity across those highways and across the particular ring road, which are the important buildings to retain and the strong frontages we need to respond to. Uh, what, there are some heritage assets in the area, how do we respond to those in a way that actually doesn't to totally compromise, the, what I think it's actually really substantial development potential in the area. So, and again, we're beginning, we've got things like 3D modelling and, and mapping and the capability to actually play, work in 3D, like Smigielski did, but in probably a slightly quicker way. Um, I, I've sort of, uh, I mean, I, I think this is, this is, a, this is going to be a part of town which actually, if we get it right, we're brilliant. If we get it wrong, uh, I think I will regret it. So that's something that I think we'll have some interesting debates over the next um, <clears throat> coming, coming months and year or two. And actually, what I think the a lot of the future of the city centre is about residential. Uh, that's, those are, you could buy one of those apartments at the moment. They're, on, they're up for sale at the moment in New Street. Um, that's the quality of accommodation. That's quality of residential offer. That I think we need to be pushing for and encouraging. Um, and actually, the sort of profile of the city and the perception of the city is something that is, has changed. Um, when Lonely Planet say you need to go to Leicester, you can't buy that sort of publicity. That's brilliant. And actually, the, the nature of the global positioning, the nature of the story is something that no, no other people have got. And there's only one, top, one, uh, one, one way in which we can, we can work with that in terms of uh, it's really about leadership and leadership. It, 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 the city mayor, I'd be saying that if he was here, he's not here yet, I was going to be a bit embarrassed. It's, but in terms of the, his, his knowledge and passion, he is. <laughs> his knowledge, your knowledge and passion is actually really, it, it's, it's great to work with because he's very, very passionate about the city and its heritage. And how we actually, uh, how we've managed to invest to the extent that the city has in very difficult times is really incredible. That integrated vision of heritage supporting the city strength and vitality and building a new tourism and cultural reputation is actually really, really, uh, really, really significant. It's considered risk-taking that other places maybe aren't, aren't set up to do. And you've got to make the most of the opportunities that are coming away because not everybody has got the Premiership Champions. And that's the slide that I thought was coming next. <coughs> but the last slide... <coughs> Who remembers the Expo 72? Five days in Abbey Park. Yeah. Can you remember what the ode was? No. You, know, you all need to stand for it. No. <laughs> no, I'm not going. I don't know what the. Uh, I, I don't know what the, the tune is. <clears throat> um, but I, I, I think this is fantastic, and it picks up that promotional thing that we heard about yesterday. Uh, <laughs> Well, I, I think there's a slightly carping comment about cats from Nottingham. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, it, it, I think that's fantastic. So with that, long live Leicester. Thank you. Thank you.